p.m. All right, let's get started. Anyways, welcome to the Laugh Tavern, first show of the new year. Happy New Year, everybody. Uh, okay. Why did my washing machine stop pumping out water? I know. Mm. And more importantly, where the hell's my hamster at? <laughs> <laughs> okay, a father and son were having a conversation, and the father says to the son, son, you were adopted. He's like, what? I knew it. I want to meet my biological parents now. The back, father says, back. well. Start now. The father said, hold on, look, look, wait, cat boy, you got to hear this one. The father's talking Here to his son, and the son, and the son says, or the father says, son, you were adopted. The son says, what? I knew it. I want to meet my biological parents. The father says, we are your biological parents. Now pack your shit. The new ones will be here to pick you up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, that's <laughs> true. I love it. <laughs> you know, don't you hate it when you come into somebody's place and they just can't shut up asking you stupid questions? You know, like, what do you want? Who are you? And, oh, my God, <laughs> is that a real gun? <laughs> <laughs> my neighbor came at me really aggressively asking if I knew anything about her underwear disappearing from her clothesline. I could tell you I nearly shit her pants. Hey. <laughs> uh, a judge asks a man, why did you steal the car? The man says, I had to get to work. The judge says, well, why didn't you take the bus? And the man says, I don't have a driver's license for the bus. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to drive a bus. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not happy with this, and I'd like to exchange it, please, a man says. And they're like, come again? Uh, sir, this is your bank statement. <laughs> He's like, I said exchange it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've read so many horrible things about drinking and smoking recently that I made a new firm New Year's resolution. No more reading for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, fuck that, I'm out, yeah. <laughs> Two blind dudes are fighting viciously. How do you stop them? You um. yell out, I'm betting on the guy with the knife. Yeah. <laughs> Some nice Chinese couple gave me a very good camera down by the Washington Monument. I didn't really understand what they were saying, but it was really nice of them. You. <laughs> <laughs> Take a picture. A son says to his mother, Mom, do you know that most of my friends got the new iPhone already? The mom replies, Son, do you know about the foster home down the street by the crossroads? <laughs> um, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Oh, oh. Uh, all right, everybody look at your keyboard. You see that symbol uh, over the seven, the symbol for the and sign? Yeah. Okay, does anybody notice that symbol looks like a dog dragging his ass across the floor? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I really can't believe that after all that enormous shit, these people are still, or they're still together. This person's like, what are you talking about? Like, my, my ass cheeks, man. Oh, uh, that's one for you, boy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> joke. A guy goes to the doctor. He said, like, please help me, doc. I've got this horrible blinking in my right eye that I just can't control. The doctor says, oh, come on. That's not really as bad as you think. And the guy says, oh, you think? Every time I go to the pharmacy to get painkillers, they give me condoms instead. Uh, <laughs> 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 yeah, a cannibal is invited to a team building week in the mountains. The instructions say he can bring one friend. But when he arrives, he brings ten people. And the organizer, being shocked, says, Come on, Alan. What the hell? The invitation said you could only bring one person. And he's like, Yeah, but it also said bring your own food, didn't it? <laughs> 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 you know, speaking of psychiatric wards, at a psychiatric ward, a doctor uh, all right, the guy says, Doctor, what should we do with a new guy in room six? He believes he's a wolf. The doctor says, Whatever you do, don't let his grandmother visit. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, Hey, Sue, what, what do you say about a nice walk? <coughs> oh, Harry, that would be lovely. 
He goes, wonderful. Can you bring me back some beer and cigarettes on your way? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you think about it. All of our devices nowadays, they update all the time, right? My mobile device is always constantly updating. My tablet's always updating. My laptop updates. My TV, my game consoles. Somehow I'm afraid to plug in my iron. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, a police officer says to a driver, okay, I need to see your driver's license, uh, your vehicle's uh, license, and first aid kit and warning triangle. The driver says, nah, I've already got all that, but how about that funny-ass captain's hat you got on? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, last night a Chinese guy came to my favorite bar. I asked him if he knew Kung Fu or some other mar uh, martial art. He said, why do you ask me that? It's because I'm Chinese. He's like, no, because you're drinking my beer and I'm about to kick your ass. <laughs> 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 yeah, if I ever go missing, you should put my picture on beer rather than milk bottles. This way my <laughs> friends will find me faster. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. And with that, hey, guys, you want to do your skit? Oh, Yay. yeah, well, we can All do right. our skit. Okay. Okay, I have to get changed in a sec. Yep, I gotta stand up and see if I can walk. Turn off this thing. Yep. Oh, here we go. We're all going to sing a song for you now. This is called The Shitty Guitar Sketch. <laughs> <laughs> There's a hole in my bucket, dear Liza, dear Liza. Oh. There's a hole in my bucket. Dear Liza, a hole. Well, hell, go to Walmart and get another one, God damn it! I can't go Walmart. They got that fancy dress code. What dress code? You see, it's that big old sign they got up front that says no shirt, no shoes, no service. Damn it, Henry! <laughs> damn it, Henry! Well, what are we gonna do about this goddamn hole in the bucket? Well, fix it, dear Henry, dear Henry, dear. Henry. Well, with what shall I fix it, dear Liza, dear Liza? With what shall I fix it, dear Liza? With what? Don't you have any goddamn duct tape? Uh, <laughs> we used up all the duct tape and the wrapping presents for Christmas. What are we going to use to fill up the hole in the bucket with? Uh, <laughs> with a straw. Henry, dear Henry, dear Henry. With a straw, dear Henry, Henry with a straw. But the straw is too long, dear Liza, dear Liza. But the straw is too long, dear Liza, too long. Well, cut it, dear Henry, dear Henry, dear Henry. Cut it, dear Henry, dear Henry, cut the straw. With what shall I cut it, dear Liza, dear Liza? With what shall I cut it, dear Liza? With what? With an Ajax, dear Henry, dear Henry, dear Henry. With an Ajax, dear Henry, dear Henry. With an axe. The axe is too dull, dear Liza, dear Liza. The axe is too dull, dear Liza, too dull. Well, uh, so are you. Uh, well, <laughs> sharpen it, dear Henry, dear Henry, dear Henry. Sharpen it, dear Henry, dear Henry. Give it the hone. Well, with what shall I sharpen it, dear Liza, dear Liza? On what shall I hone it, dear Liza? With what? Certainly not on your wit, Henry. On a stone, <laughs> dear Henry, dear Henry, dear Henry. On a stone, dear Henry, dear Henry. On a stone. But the stone is too dry, dear Liza, dear Liza. But the stone is too dry, dear Liza, too dry. Well, wet it, dear Henry, dear Henry, dear Henry. Well, wet it, dear Henry, dear Henry. But the stone. With what shall I wet it, dear Liza, dear Liza? With what shall I wet it, dear Liza? With what? Jesus Christ, Henry, do I have to explain everything to you? Can't you work this out for yourself? 
<laughs> uh, my head bone don't work too good after you're done smack me upside the head with a shovel. Mm. <laughs> I used to know how about what this stone went. <laughs> <laughs> I want to this off the stage that one. Man, did you, <laughs> you, Henry? Are you all right? Oh, I'm you're okay. still. Just, you ain't too bright, Henry, but you're awful cute. I need to know what I'm going to wet this stone with. <laughs> oh, piss on it. <laughs> Man, that's our, that's, our, that's our bit for tonight, everybody. Hey. Give it up for Catboy and why not? And Our shitty Henry guitar Ryan. sketch. Oh, when are you gonna do the rest of your regular comedy? Oh, I don't care. Whenever you're ready, buddy. Yeah. Are you ready? Nah, I'm ready. All right, all right. Get my fat go. ass back up there again. Oh, <laughs> it really is hard uh, lugging all this lard around, but uh, I mean, he Henry likes it a lot, so I have to keep. <laughs> 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 Yeah, now this is an actual letter that was published. It was sent to a bank by a 96-year-old woman. The bank manager thought it was amusing enough to get it put in the New York Times. Yep. A 96-year-old woman. To whom it may concern, I'm writing to thank you for bouncing my check with which I endeavored to pay my plumber last month. By my calculations, three nanoseconds must have elapsed between his depositing the check and the arrival of my account of the funds needed to honor it. I'll refer, of course, to the automatic monthly transfer of funds from my modest savings account, an arrangement which I admit has been in place for only 31 years. <clears throat> <laughs> You're to be commended for seizing that brief window of opportunity and also for debiting my account $30 by way of penalty for the inconvenience caused your bank. My thankfulness springs from the manner in which this incident has caused me to rethink my errant financial ways. Mm. I notice that whereas I personally attend to your telephone calls and letters when I try to contact you, I am confronted by the impersonal overcharging pre-recorded faceless entity which your bank has recently become. From now on, mm. I, like you, Choose only to deal with a flesh and blood person. My mortgage and loan repayments will therefore and hereafter no longer be automatic, but will arrive at your bank by check, addressed personally and confidentially to an employee at your bank whom you must nominate. By, uh, mm. Be aware, it's an offense under the Postal Act for any other person to open such an envelope. Mm -hmm. Oh, please find attached an application contact status form, which I require your chosen employee to complete. I'm sorry mm -hmm. it runs to eight pages, <laughs> but in order that I know as much about him or her as your bank knows about me, there's <laughs> no alternative. Uh, oh, please oh, note, gosh. please note, all copies of his or her medical history must be countersigned by a notary public, <laughs> and the mandatory details of his financial institution, income, debts, assets, and liabilities must be accompanied by documented proof. Oh, in due course, I will issue your employee with a PIN number, which he or she must quote in dealings with me. I regret mm. it cannot be shorter than 28 digits, but again, <laughs> I've modeled it on the number of button presses required of me to access mm. my account balance on your phone bank service. As <laughs> they say, as they say, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> oh, please, please allow me to level the playing field even further. When you call me... You will now have a menu of options on my new voicemail system to choose from. Please <laughs> press the buttons as follows. To make an appointment to see me, or to query a missing payment, or to transfer the call to my living room in case I am there, or to transfer to my bedroom in case I'm sleeping, or to transfer the call to my toilet in case I'm attending to nature, or to transfer <laughs> the call to my mobile phone if I'm not at home, or to leave a message on my computer a password to access my computer is required, of course. Password will be communicated to you at a later date to the authorized contact. Oh, to return to the main menu and listen to options one through seven. Oh, to make a general complaint or inquiry, the contact will then be put on hold pending the attention of my automated answering <laughs> service. <laughs> Well, this may on occasion involve a lengthy way uplifting music will play for the duration of that call. 
Well, regrettably, but again, following your example, I must also levy, levy an establishment fee of $50 to cover the setting up of this new arrangement for you. Please credit my account after each occasion. Uh, and may I wish you a happy, if ever so slightly less prosperous, New Year. Your <laughs> humble client. Oh, and remember, that was written by a 96-year-old woman. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's pretty sharp wit for a 96-year-old. She's on her I game. I think so. I think it could have been my mother, but she died younger. Oh, well. Oh, well. So a Russian scientist and a Czech scientist had spent their lives studying the grizzly, and each year they petitioned their respected governments to allow them to go to Yellowstone to study the bears. And finally their request was granted, and they immediately flew to New York and on west to Yellowstone. They reported to the ranger station, and they were told it was grizzly mating season. It was too dangerous to go out and study. So they pleaded. This is their last chance. Finally, after much pleading, the ranger relented. So the Russian and the Czech were given portable phones and told to report in every day. And for several days, they did call in. And then nothing was heard from them. And the rangers mounted a search party, and they found the camp completely ravaged. No sign of the missing guys. They followed a trail of male and female bears. They found the female and decided they had to kill her to find out if she'd eaten the scientists. Because they feared... An international incident. So they killed the female animal, opened the stomach, and they find the remains of the Russian. And one ranger turned to the other and said, You know what this means, don't you? And the other said, Of course, the check is in the mail. <laughs> oh, the check's in the mail. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, well, that good. goes along with our granny thing. So one day in the jungle, a chimpanzee invented some tools to eat his dinner. One tool was a flat stick sharpened along one edge, and this he used to cut his food. And the other was a stick with four smaller sticks attached to each end and sharpened to a point. And he used it to spear his food and place it in his mouth. The chimp was so proud of his invention, he called it his, his uh, one-point tool and his four-point tool. Well, one day he woke up and he found the four-point tool was gone. So he was so distraught. He ran around the jungle trying to find his great precious four-point tool. He saw the lion. He goes, have you seen my four-point tool? And the lion says, no, I have not seen your four-point tool. And then he came upon a gorilla. Gorilla, have you seen my four-point tool? Oh, no, I haven't seen your four-point tool. And then he came upon a jaguar. Have you seen my four-point tool? Yup, says the jaguar. I've seen your four-point tool. Well, where is it, says the chimp. I ate it, said the jaguar smugly. Why would you do that, says the chimp? Because, replied the big cat, I'm a four-point two-liter jaguar. <laughs> oh, four <laughs> <point> two <laughs> okay. Nice Bugs guy. Bunny was shopping at the supermarket, and a sales assistant said to him, If you can tell me what 19,866 times 10,543 is, we'll give you free carrots for life. And immediately, Bugs says, Two hundred nine million four hundred forty-seven two hundred thirty-eight. The assistant's like, "Wow, how on earth did you do that?" And Bug says, "If there's one thing wabbits are good at, it's multiplying." Mm. <laughs> <laughs> that joke's in Zootopia. <laughs> this rich man's trying to find his daughter a birthday gift, and he saw a poor man with a beautiful white horse, and he told the man. I'll give you $500 for that horse. And the poor man said, well, I don't know, mister. It don't look so good. And he walked away. And the next day, the rich man came back, and he offered the poor man $1,000 for the horse. And the poor man goes, I don't know, mister. It don't look so good. On the third day, the rich man offered him 2000 And the he said he wouldn't take no for an answer. Come on, you gotta, you got to sell it to me. So the poor man finally agreed, and the rich man took the horse home, and his daughter loved it. She climbed on the horse. He galloped right into a tree and killed the daughter. The rich man rushes back over to the poor man's house, demanding an explanation for this horse's blindness. And the poor man says, I told you it don't look so good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that was Henry. He sold that horse. You still having a bad day? Just remember, it could be worse. This is taken from a Florida newspaper. Of yeah, course it happens in Florida. One seal. <laughs> After the yeah. Exxon Valdez oil spill in Alaska was $80,000 for one seal. At a special ceremony, two of the most expensively saved animals were released back in the wild amid much cheer and applause from onlookers. And then one minute later, in full view of everyone, a killer whale ate both of them. <laughs> <laughs> right. A 
woman came home to find her husband in the kitchen shaking frantically with what looked like a wire was running from his waist toward the electric kettle. And she wanted to jolt him away from the deadly current, so she whacked him with a handy plank of wood by the back door and broke his arm in two places. Until that moment, he had been happily listening to his Walkman. Oh, well. <laughs> okay. Two animal right mm. protesters were protesting at the cruelty of sending pigs to a slaughterhouse in Bonn, Germany. And suddenly, <laughs> all the pigs, 2,000 of them, escaped through a broken fence and stampeded and trampled the two protesters. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and finally, uh, uh. a rocky terrorist, and I can't say his name, he didn't pay enough postage on a letter bomb, and it came back with return to sender stamped on it, forgetting it was the mm -hmm. bomb he opened it and got blown to bits. Now, your day <laughs> has not been that bad, has it? <laughs> mm -hmm. Hey, Moo Moo. Hey, Moo. Hey, everybody who came in that Love I didn't you, Moo -Moo. see. Yeah. So, one day, this diver is enjoying the aquatic world 20 feet below sea level, and he sees the sky down at the same depth. But he has no scuba deer gear on with him. So he's like, he went below another 20 feet, and the guy joined him a few minutes later. And the diver went below 25 feet more. And a few minutes later, same guy joined him. And the confused diver, he, he took out a waterproof chalkboard and put, How the heck are you able to stay under this deep without equipment? And the guy took the board and the chalk and said, Erased it all and put, I am drowning, you fucking moron. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so this highway patrolman, he pulled alongside a speeding car on the freeway. And glancing at the car, he was astounded to see the blonde behind the wheel was knitting. And realizing she was totally oblivious to his flashing lights and siren, he cranked down his window, turned on his bullhorn, and yelled, Pull over! Mm. No, the blonde said, it's a scarf. No. <laughs> yeah. And these are some um, inspirational, inspiring gifts called Brain Cramps by Famous People. These quotes were made by famous people without much thought. On September 17, 1994, Alabama's Heather Witherstone was selected as Miss America in 1995. And here's her answer to her question. The question is, if you could live forever, would you and why? And she said, I, I would not live forever because we should not live forever because if we were supposed to live forever, then we would live forever, but we cannot live forever, which is why I would not live forever. <laughs> okay. Whenever I watch TV and see these poor mm. starving kids all over the world, I can't help but cry. I mean, I'd love to be skinny like that, but not with all those flies and death and stuff, Mariah Carey. <laughs> <laughs> so sad. Smoking kills. If you're killed, you've lost a very important part of your life. Brooke Shields, during an interview to become a spokesperson for the federal anti-smoking campaign. <laughs> this is Mayor Marion Berry of D.C. saying, Outside of the killings, Washington has one of the lowest crime rates in the country. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Here's Hillary Clinton commenting on the release of subpoenaed documents. I'm not going to have some reporters pawing through our papers. We are the president. <laughs> uh, here's a con con congressional candidate in Texas. That low-down scoundrel deserves to be kicked to death by a jackass, and I'm just the one to do it. <laughs> <laughs> here's Al Gore, vice president. It isn't pollution that's harming the environment. It's the impurities in our air and water that are doing it. <laughs> Dan Quayle, I love California. I practically grew up in Phoenix. <laughs> <laughs> Lee Iacocca, we have to pause and ask ourselves, how much clean air do we need? <laughs> <laughs> Here's an ROTC instructor, Colonel Gerald Wellman. He says, we don't necessarily discriminate. We simply exclude certain types of people. <laughs> <laughs> Bill Clinton president <laughs> if we don't succeed we ruin the rest we run the risk of failure Duh. <laughs> <laughs> couple enderberry says traditionally most australia's imports come from overseas Duh. <laughs> i mean where is australia <laughs> all right your food stamps will be stopped effective march 1992 because we received notice you passed away may god bless <laughs> you 
You may reapply if there's a change in your circumstances. The department. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you come back, that's in Greenville, South Carolina, Social Services. Mm. If somebody has a bad heart, they can plug this jack in at night as they go to bed, and it will monitor their heart throughout the night and the next morning. And when they wake up dead, there'll be a record of it. <laughs> Chairman. And uh, that's mine for the night, boys and girls. Yay! Yay. Give it up for why. Yay! 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 Yay. Yay. Why not? Yay! I just want to make an announcement, everybody. It's Tindy's birthday. So Yay! Happy birthday, Yay, Tindy! Tindy. It's Yay. real life. Oh, yeah. Real life. Real life, life birthday. birthday. Happy ah, birthday, Tindy. And how old are you? Old are you? Yeah, I knew that was coming. How old are you? You never asked that of a lady. <laughs> oh, okay, you yeah, can ask. This is Tindy. Uh, five decades. Five. Wow. You big just turned 50. Big Welcome one. to the club, yo. <laughs> hey! Welcome to the club. Hey! Woo. I still got 20 more years before that. Oh, shut the uh, hell up. Hopefully. <laughs> no, I'm 20 uh, for the third time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 30th time. Oh, uh, you know, I, I was gonna, I was gonna start a procrastinators club, but then I realized I'd have to reject anyone who actually turned up to the meeting, so mm -hmm. I decided to put it off again. <laughs> Thank you, why? You know, I heard the Secret Service had to change their commands. They can't say Ow. get down anymore when the president's under attack. Now they say Donald Duck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you sneak into my room unnoticed. You gently touch one bit of my naked body after the other until you find the most desirable place. And then you start sucking. Fucking mosquitoes. <laughs> you, know, you know, I read I read that mass chicken farms pump chickens full of antibiotics. Well, that would explain at least why chicken soup is so good when you have a cold. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a question on an internet forum says, please help, I have this great itching between my toes. And the answer was, well, that depends. If the itching is between all your toes, you should consult a dermatologist. If the itching bothers you between only between your two big toes, you should you should consult a gynecologist. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know they say you can't get a decent job without education, but look at Albert Einstein. He was a dropout and still ended up being the first man on the moon. Oh. <laughs> hey. I asked the doctor, I said, how can I live longer than 100 years? The doctor says, well, do you smoke? And I'm like, no. He says, do you eat too much? And I said, no. He said, do you go to bed late? And I'm like, no. And then I said, do you have affairs with promiscuous women? I said, no. He's like, then why the fuck do you want to live more than 100 years? <laughs> yeah, <that sucks. laughs> a student at a management school came up to a pretty girl and kissed her without any warning. The surprise girl said, what the hell was that? The guy smiled at her, and he says, direct marketing. So the girl slapped <laughs> the shit out of him, and he's like, what was that? And the boy said, the boy holding his cheek, she goes, that's customer feedback. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, you know, I fear my neighbor may be stalking me. She's been Googling, Googling my name last night on her computer, and I saw it clearly through my binoculars. So I knew Yeah, that. man, that's messed up. You shouldn't be doing that. Yeah. <laughs> You know, when somebody makes you really angry, count to three. When you get to two, punch them in the face because they won't hey. be expecting that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, two immigrants from Africa arrive in the United States and are discussing the difference between their country and the United States. One of them mentions he's heard that people in the U.S. eat dogs. And if they're going to fit in, they better eat dogs as well. So they head to the nearest hot dog stand and order two dogs. First guy unwraps his, looks at it, and nervously looks at his friend and says, which part did you get? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which part of the yeah. dog did you get? Yeah. <laughs> you know, an elderly man was on the operating table about to be operated on by his son, who's a famous surgeon. Just before they put him under, he has to speak to his son. The son comes in and he says, don't be nervous, boy. Just do your best and just remember, if it doesn't go well, if something happens to me, your mother's going to come and live with you forever. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 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 
Uh, and, uh, you know, has anyone ever had that awkward moment when you make eye contact with someone while you're eating a banana? <laughs> <laughs> oh, and with that, I'm going to bring up Catboy. Catboy, come on up here. Yay! Yay. Hey, 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 hello, everyone. Hey, uh, hey, hey, hey. hey how, what did everyone get for Christmas? Anyone get any great presents? No. <sighs> no? No, I got a rat with a tank top for Christmas. It's a gym rat. <laughs> Yeah, hope it works <laughs> for me. Mm, uh, okay. All right. Well, actually, I did get a strange pet temporarily. Um, before this huge ass cold wave of cold air came in, uh, we had some unusually warm weather, and I had the back door open to um, what was that uh, to the back porch, and then I went downstairs to check messages on my computer. And while I'm down on the computer, I look up, and there's a cat I've never seen before in my basement, mm -hmm. just sitting there. Um, and, uh, was it, and I have another cat, it was at Norton, who's not freaking out, but he's just sort of looking at him and, and like, dude, what the fuck? Right. You know, <laughs> house. Uh, damn ballsy little thing, but it wasn't a stray because he looked very well fed and he had a collar on and I've seen him before a couple of times. So I saw, I kind of know that he's from a few houses down. So, uh, just decided to come in for a visit or whatever, or steal some cat food. Who knows? But uh, <laughs> um, everything's very civil. Like, until he goes back upstairs, he runs into the other cat, and the other cat, Nelson, freaks the fuck out. Okay? They are chasing each other all over the kitchen, knocking over the coffee maker, the blender, everything. You know, the flower thing got knocked over. Flower all over the damn floor and everything. Cats are screaming, hissing, crying. And I'm, I'm standing over by the rear door, like, holding it all the way open. It's like, door's right here, guys. Right here, it's like you can find every corner of this house to knock something over. You can't find a door that's two meters wide. Seriously? <laughs> <laughs> well, those are cats for you. Anyway, moving right along, uh, the GOP celebrated a victory that they managed to pass a tax reform bill. And doesn't, don't you think it comes across as a bit s shallow to celebrate something the entire party wanted? When they control all three branches of the U.S. government, <laughs> you know? like them celebrating passing a bill is like a, some soccer team all alone on a field, and they manage to kick a ball into an empty net. <laughs> goes, yeah, hey, hey, we're not retarded after all, yay! <laughs> anyway, I hear Second Life. Get a little of this. I was touring around Second Life because Second Life, you know, is, is a little bit in decline, but a lot of people putting up some new stuff out there. There are some new interesting things up there, and I heard in Second Life there's an entire sim run by a group of people that is dedicated mm. to crazy conspiracy theories. And you'll go there, you'll see they have all builds dedicated to Area 51 and stuff like that. And I was thinking, I got this funny idea. Linden Labs should shut them down and never explain why. <laughs> See, so all of them just freak out. It's like, dude, they were onto something. We we're onto something. Which one? Which one? <laughs> I got to tell you a funny story, though. Who here knows who Robert Stacks is? He was that really funny guy in the movie Airplane, and he mm -hmm. also had his own uh -huh. show. Uh, what was that show called? Um, Mysteries. Unsolved Mysteries. Remember that? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, apparently, now, they had a lot of really crazy stuff on there. Apparently, Robert Stacks actually didn't believe in most of it. I mean, he was just a paid actor. He wasn't somebody that actually wrote the script and believed in this sort of thing. And apparently, there were tons of times where, right in the middle of filming, he would just go, he would just go over to the producer and Ray, are you fucking kidding me? We're putting this on the air? Seriously? <laughs> and you know what? I'm thinking, I swear to God, if they put it on DVD, let's hear the outtakes. There's nothing in the more I want to hear than Robert Stacks going, Denied on Unsolved Mysteries. Oh, for Christ's sake, Bud, look, Bigfoot, are you kidding me? This is some flat earth bullshit, Ray. Uh, flat earth <laughs> next week, Bob. Oh, fuck me! <laughs> flat earth. Not a thing. Anyway, let's move on. Um, I hear one of the very first programmable calculators. Oh, right. I had one of the very first programmable pal calculators that came out in the 80s. Does anyone remember these? It was before the TI calculators came out. The TI oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, and they were really fragile. Like, I broke two of them right? mm. because they had a, a huge-ass screen that was, like, solar powered or whatever. And if you broke it, like, 60 bucks down the toilet, I had one. And I used to put my crib notes on it thinking I was, like, really, really clever. I put cheat notes on it. The problem is, how do you explain why you need a calculator during a history exam? Mm. <laughs> That's the you so, part. You so <laughs> old, your calculator was an abacus. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
Actually, just um, just an interesting note. I'm trying to find one of those mechanical calculators that came out in the 50s. Those are collector's items. Some of them are worth over a thousand dollars. Wow. Yeah, there's ones where um, it's completely mechanical, where you set the numbers on a dial and you crank it until it comes up with a solution. <laughs> yeah, I, I think they're actually pretty cool. Well, anyway, let's move on. They are. Uh, oh, I got a quiz for you. Try to think. This is somebody. Uh, this is a really neat question that somebody came up with on Reddit on the Second Life thing, on Reddit, and they said, if your avatar as it is right now was an NPC. Now, everyone knows what an NPC is. That's a non-playable character. That's usually someone in the background that you kill, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. It's like a mm -hmm. boss or, or like some other drone that's like, what would your, if your avatar was an NPC, what would it drop after somebody killed it? In my case, that would be a lot of garters. <laughs> I mean, tons of garters. Yeah. Mine would be a but bunch of weed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just weed. Little, little packets of weed, yeah. Okay. Mm. All right, now, um, oh, somebody, this is a really wicked idea that somebody picked up the other day. This will be a great practical joke. Now, you remember when Donald Trump, um, he tweeted the word kafefe, and no one knows what that means, right? Mm -hmm. Kafefe, right here. I'll spell it out for you. He, he put this in his tweet, and it, there was no context in it that made any sense. It's like, fucking mm. made up shit. Yeah, I know. But someone said, the next time he does that, just go, dude, did you just tweet the fucking launch codes? <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, man, that's not good. <laughs> he tweeted the launch codes. <laughs> 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 That'd be a great practical joke to pull on somebody. You know what the difference is between being hungry and being horny is where the cucumber goes. <laughs> oh. Okay, here's one. A woman was having a shower, right? Doorbell rings, right? And she hears someone, she hears a voice that says, it's the blind man. Like, oh, he's blind. Okay, fine. I'm not going to bother putting a towel on. Just goes up, bare-ass naked, opens the door. The guy goes, nice tits. Now, where do you want, want me to put these blinds? Where do you want me to hang them? <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. My goal during the holidays was to lose 10 pounds. I only got 15 more to go. <laughs> <laughs> man, did I eat a lot of turkey. Holy moly. Smallest turkey I could find was like 12 freaking pounds. That's the smallest I could find. Ugh, I want to throw most of it away. And everyone's saying, like, do you want to make turkey soup? And it's like, no, you know what? I'd rather go on continuing with the will to live. <laughs> you know, after I have three, day, three days in a row of turkey, no, I don't want turkey soup. No. Anyway, here's a joke. Two Tennessee rednecks, Bubba and Jim Bob, were sitting at their favorite bar drinking beer. And Bubba turns to Bob and he says, you know, I'm tired of going through life without an education. Tomorrow, I'm going to go to community college and sign up for some classes. And Jim Bob thinks, that's a great idea. So the two leave. The next day, Bubba goes to town. He goes to college. He meets the dean of admissions. He signs him up for four basic classes, math, English, history, and logic. And logic goes, Bubba says, what's that? And the dean says, well, oh, here, I'll show you. Um, do you own a weed eater? And he goes, yeah. Well, then logically speaking, because you own a weed eater, I think that you would have a yard. He says, that's true, I have a yard. And he says, okay, I'm not done yet. Because you have a yard, I think logically you would have a house. He says, I do have a house. And because you have a house, I think that logically you have a family. You do have a family. Not done yet. Now, because you have a family, then logically you must have a wife. I do have a wife. And because you have a wife, logic tells me that you are a heterosexual. I am a heterosexual. It's amazing. You can find out all that from, I, from me having a weed eater. It's amazing. Anyway, excited, he takes the class. Bubba takes a, shakes the dean's hand, goes to meet Jim Bob at the local bar, and he tells Jim Bob about his classes. He says, sign up for math, English, history, and logic. And Jim goes, logic, what's that? And he says, Bubba, here, let me give you an example. Do you have a weed eater? He says, no. Then you're gay. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> okay. My sex life is like a video game. It's set on hard mode. It's single player, and I need $300 to unlock the multiplayer package. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, then my dad says your life was Star Wars Battlefront. Anyway, young ventriloquist is touring Norway, and he puts on a show in a small fishing town with his dummy on his knee, and he starts going through his usual dumb blonde jokes. That's his thing. That's his kick. Right? That's the hook he has. He tells nothing but blonde jokes. Well, suddenly there's a blonde woman, and the fourth row stands up in her chair, and she starts shouting, I've heard enough of your stupid blonde jokes. What makes you think that you could stereotype Norwegian blonde women that way? 
What does the color of a woman's hair have to do with how much a human being is worth? It's men like you that keep women from me but being respected at work at the community. And you are reaching our, and reaching our full potential as people. It's people like you that makes others think that all blondes are dumb. <laughs> you continue to perpetuate this discrimination against not only blondes but women in general pathetically. And all in the name of humor. And the ventriloquist is absolutely shattered. It's going, oh my God, um, I really had no idea. I mean, honestly, I just thought they were funny jokes. And, uh, and, he, and he really tries to apologize. And the blonde says, you stay out of this. I'm talking about little bastards sitting on your lap. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. There we go. You know, when Mary had a little boy, all the three wise men were not surprised. But when she had a lamb, they freaked right the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> they were just tripping. Like, what the hell, man? You know, it's Christmas Eve, Santa's delivering presents. In one house, a young woman is waiting for him, right, when he climbs down the chimney. She says, Santa, will you stay? And he says, oh, 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 Santa's got to go. I got presents to deliver, you know. And the young lady goes, well, if I take off my gown, will you stay? And she drops her gown, standing with her, with her bra and her underwear on. And Santa goes, oh, 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 Santa's got to go. I got presents to deliver, you know. Well, what if I take off my bra, will you stay? And she takes off her bra. The Santa goes, ho, 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 Santa's got to go. I got presents to deliver, you know. And finally, the lady says, what if I take off my panties, will you stay? And her panties drop to the floor. And then Santa says, hey, 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 Santa's got to stay. I can't get up by the chimney with a stiffy in the way. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Christmas is a lot like sex, okay? The buildup is great, and when it finally comes, I regret spending all that money. <laughs> <laughs> A boyfriend. A boyfriend is driving down the street with his blonde girlfriend in the passenger seat. The boyfriend becomes concerned that the turn signals are not working. Now, you probably don't remember this, but they used to make cars with turn signals. Those things were up top, so you know that they were working. They don't do that no. anymore. They're, they're way down on the side, so they're out of the driver's side of the view. So you just sort of take their word for it that they're working. And the boyfriend gets worried and he says, you know what? I think one of them might be broken. So he asks his girlfriend, saying, look, will you lean out the window and tell me if the turn signal's working? I'm going to put it on right now. So she sticks her head out the window and she says, it's working. It's not working. It's working. It's not working. It's working. <laughs> Does anyone know what the difference is between a rook and a bishop? A rook and a bishop. That's those two pieces. Chess pieces. Chess pieces, right. What is the difference between a rook and a bishop? I know what they are, but I have no idea what they... <laughs> okay, well, here, let me explain what they do. A rook moves in a straight line, and a bishop has sex with young boys. <laughs> yeah, that's oh, how that works. All right. <laughs> a teacher and his student were walking through together at school. Oh, now, this is a joke that somebody sent me. This is a common Norwegian joke. Mm -hmm. uh, Finnish Norwegian that this is a pretty common joke out there someone said this to me a teacher and a student are walking together in school there is a bridge on a river on the commute which everyone uses to pass that day the river was not quiet it was all overflowing and scary and they tried to pass the bridge but the river water started to come up to the edge of the bridge and it started to swamp the bridge over well the student he knew how to swim so he jumps into the river the teacher doesn't know how to swim at all, and he didn't want to look back from look back in front of the student, so he, he jumps into the river and he starts to drown. Well, the student saw this and he saves the teacher from drowning. The teacher thanked him and asked him if he could return the favor in any way. And the student said, "Please don't give us any homework out of the holidays, or the other students are going to fucking kill me." Ah! <laughs> Kick my ass. Don't you hate people who do that? It's like I got some work for you to do over the holidays. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> not happening why wasn't the hammer allowed to join a party with the other seven tools hmm why because he was too late <laughs> oh, too late oh you know what I'm going to save this other joke for later because it's a frying pan joke um, I mm. wanted to do it so why not supposed to hit me in the head with a frying pan I'll save it for tomorrow Oh, my for that. Man, Why, don't wait for the joke. Do it. Do it. I can't. Yeah, <laughs> I can't yeah, even find it. Frying frying pan right now. Jennifer will have to tell me. Jennifer okay. will have to tell me what it's called because I couldn't find it. Remember? That's okay. I'll I'll get you one between now and tomorrow. I'll figure it out. Anyway, All right. I bought my mom a book on mindfulness, and she didn't appreciate the present. 
James present. Oh, okay. Blonde has been saving up money to buy herself a new TV for Christmas. Yay, Christmas. Yay. Yay. Yeah, we all like new TVs, right? She spots the TV she's been saving up for. She picks it up, goes to the cashier, and the cashier says, get a load of this. Right? Sorry, we don't serve blondes. Well, the, the blonde is just absolutely flabbergasted and disgruntled. She goes back home. She says, you know what? Um, I want that TV. So she's going to use a disguise, and she dyes her hair black. Next day, she goes to the appliance, appliance store. She picks out the same TV and once again goes to pay, and the cashier says, sorry, but I told you yesterday we don't serve blondes. Hmm? And the blonde is just furious. She's going home saying, he recognized me. Okay, you know what? I'm going to step up my game. Right? She knew something about makeup. So she uh, she gets some side, you know, those special effects makeup, and she watches the tutorials off of YouTube, and she comes up with this disguise using latex and spirit gum to make herself look like an old man, right? And she goes back the next day in this beautiful disguise, you know, looking like an 80-year-old man, and she picks up TV, takes it up, right, and the cashier welcomes her and says, hello, sir, how can I help you today? And she says, oh, I'd like to buy this TV, please, young man. The cashier says, I'm sorry, I told you the other day, we don't serve blondes. And the blonde goes, damn it, how did you know? And the cashier says, because that's a microwave. (laughs) 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 You know, my whole life, I thought air was free until I bought a bag of chips. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You know, working home really sucks if you're a firefighter. Hmm. Working at home really sucks if you're a fire if if you're a fighter pilot. Mm. Yeah, fighter pilot. See, Battle of Britain wasn't that fun. I thought the Battle of Britain would be pretty screwed up. How would you like to be in a dogfight over your own house? Mm. I can see my happen. house from oh shit, it's gone. Yeah, no shit, it's on fire. Oh no. Okay, what do you call people that have sex with people? What do you call someone who has a fetish and wants to have sex with people in Santa suits? Hmm. Mm. That's what you call a ho ho sexual. Uh-huh. Ho ho ho. Now, do I have time to do um, the, um, the the news? Anyone want to hear the news? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah we right. love the, the news. news. All right. Well, there. Let me get up. Let me get out my things. Do all the news. It's unfit to print. All the news. It's unfit. By the way, does that? I watched a special on CNN the other night. It was about uh, the you know not for ready prime time players Saturday Night Live, and you know this that's where I got this skit from, right? And they said that Chevy Chase was only on there for one season. Can you believe that? Yeah, he was on yeah, the, the opening impact. season. The impact him. that he had, that was just one season he did. And after he left was when uh, Bill Murray came on board. I honestly thought he was there for a lot longer than that. Okay, let me see if I could find the desk. I can't find my desk. That reminds me oh. of that family guy. It's upstairs. It's 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 in the roof of the building. No, it's not. It's uh, it's down. It's it's. Remember, it's over at Lauren's place. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's over. At oh yeah, it's over at Lauren's in place. In the roof. Okay. Oh, oh shoot. Oh shit! Wrong. I pressed the wrong button. Oh, it's okay. I'll find it. I'll just read it from here. Yes. I'll yeah. Just read it from here. Okay. Here we go. Fall. Bomb pow. Okay, today, in the news, in the news, did anyone see Disney released their robot of Donald Trump in Disneyland's Hall of Presidents? Yeah. Immediately, people started saying it looks exactly like Hillary Clinton wearing a Donald Trump wig. (laughs) Apparently, Disney was not expecting Trump to win last year when they were working on the robot. (laughs) Today, the White House released a statement saying that if North Korea is capable of building a missile that could reach New York City, the entire world should be worried. When asked what makes a, you know so special about New York being a target, Donald Trump said, if you can make it there, you can make it anywhere. Mm-hmm. <laughs> also, would start World War III and kill everybody. Sarah Palin's son was arrested for a domestic abuse recently. Track Palin faces charges for beating up his father. And said Sarah Palin's husband actually confronted Track with a loaded gun. Court proceedings are being put on hold as Sarah is pursuing counseling options to settle the family problem. They'll be appearing in a future episode of Jerry Springer. <laughs> in light of the changing economy, Wall Street Journal published the top 10 list of jobs that do not exist anymore. The very top of the list was Steve. 
Oh, shit. <laughs> John? Okay. Yes, yeah, Today, John. a group of, was it, today, a group of member from the Flat Earth Society, they, was it, oh yeah, a group of members from the Flat Earth Society all went skydiving. They all landed on a plane. <laughs> <laughs> In Hollywood, Johnny Depp broke up with his latest girlfriend after she found out that she was a necromancer. He said she wanted us to raise a family together. Mm. <laughs> Guinness Book of World Records went to Albania this week to find a man who claimed to have five penises. After confirming the story was true, they said his underwear fits like a glove. <laughs> <laughs> Guinness Book of World Records also just recorded the fastest game of Pass the Parcel that ever happened anywhere in the world. It was at an ISIS birthday party. <laughs> That's parcels like hot potato. Last week, Canada appointed a new Chief Justice Minister, Robert Wagner. When asked what was the most difficult thing about the job, he said, having to read all the comments from Americans that they didn't know the guy from Austin Powers and Heart to Heart was a Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> J.K. Rowling announced recently that she is writing a new book. When asked what it would be about, she said, it's going to be a fantasy very similar to Harry Potter. It's about a ginger kid with more than two friends. <laughs> <laughs> Recent studies show for, for single men to look attractive to women at the gym, the sexiest machine you can use is the ATM. <laughs> <laughs> Today at London General, doctors worked a miracle for a boy born with no eyelids. They used his foreskin to graft eyelids to his face. Doctor said the boy would be perfectly fine until it reaches puberty, where he may wind up a little cockeyed. <laughs> <laughs> also, final message is, guys, please don't drink and drive this holiday season. If you want to drive safely, we can help. Please call us. We are seniors, experienced people at all ages. Our volunteers will come and drink for you so you can drive safely. Yay! Yay! <laughs> Hi, volunteers. Yeah. And that's the way you wish it wasn't. I'm Catboy Kunhua. Oh, yay! Yay! yay. yay. Give it up for Catboy, yay! Yay, Catboys! And thanks, everybody, for those donuts. <laughs> um, hmm. I got a couple jokes here, and then we'll finish up. Uh, you know, my dog once ate all the tiles to my Scrabble games. Huh! And now he keeps leaving me a message around the house. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, uh, a boy named Timmy is trapped in a well somewhere. All right. Um, uh, uh, two men are stranded on a deserted island. One despairs, but the other one claps or slaps him assuredly on the back and says, don't worry, they will definitely find us and soon. And he says, really? Why do you think so? And he says, I owe the IRS five years. Worth of <laughs> <laughs> How long does a Russian need to take to reach a blood alcohol level of 0.8? No. About two days of no drinking. Oh. <laughs> Oh, you know that moment when you put your steak on the grill and your mouth waters all over from that amazing smell? Mm -hmm. Do you think vegans feel the same way when they mow their grass? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know how to make a dumb person curious? Mm. You know how? Nope. I'll tell you tomorrow. Mm. <laughs> 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 You know, I was actually reading through my car manual the other day, and there was this uh, one quote in there that says, backing rapidly at a tree significantly reduces your trunk space. <laughs> 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 so I walked up to a guy and said, excuse me, sir, have you seen a police officer around? And they're like, no, I haven't seen a soul around, actually. And I said, okay, very good. Now give me your wallet, your watch, and your laptop. Oh, you're winning him a <laughs> and that's all we got for today. Got a couple of announcements to make. Yay! Um, yeah. Of course, we do this every Tuesday, 5 p.m. SL time. If you need a tag to the Laugh Tavern group or Hooligans group, you either hit me or Nick up, and we'll get you set up. Also, um, tomorrow night at Lauren Live in, in uh, Cookie Sim, there will be comedy hosted by yeah. Cowboy Kun Hua. Kun Hua. Kun Hua. And then Thursday nights at Hooligans, which is below us, 
Uh, we will be doing, is it match game this week? Yes. 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 Yeah, okay. We're, match game, yeah. All right, we're doing match game. And with that, thank you all for coming. Yay! Woo! Yay! Yay. Oh, hey, and, boys um, and girls. Games at Why Not's place. <laughs> I came to the big old city, now I know I'm so I had a little bit of weed and a couple of rolls Pop one, pop two, pop three, pop four And I was buzzing like a bee on my bedroom floor I got up, I had to hit the town I got up, goddamn, I had to get on down I had all this love in my bones And nowhere to go So you can cut my hair Where the